What's going on, y'all? It's your boy, Cool Colas here, and you are now tuning into a new episode of the Pro Black Blurred Kingdom Podcast. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about a topic that I believe is something most people probably would disagree with, and most people would probably feel this way because of the idea of honoring and respecting that there are all different types of black folks all over the diaspora. And so what I'm going to talk about today is going to seem like it goes against that. Today, I want to talk about why diversity is not a good thing when it comes to black people in white comic media. On top of me talking about why diversity is not good for black people in white comic media, I'm also going to be speaking about what benign neglect is. And I also want to talk a little bit about civil rights and its disservice to black folks. When one thinks of diversity, the first thing that comes to mind is a demographic that is racially vast and or does not include white folks solely, but more so individuals of other ethnic, cultural, and racial backgrounds in addition. Most black folks believe diversity to be good for a few reasons. For one, the ideal diversity is a form of comfort for us. When we are in a space or area and we see numerous white folks and people who don't look like us, we want some comfort in knowing that we aren't alone racially. The other reason is many black folks believe that diversity is a magnet for progressiveness. In other words, with diversity comes progressive ideals and opportunities that were not once present for them. This is often coupled with excessive value being placed on representation, as a lot of people like to say, and this being a quote-unquote stride made in effective change for blacks. The honest truth on why diversity in white comic media is not a good thing is really, really simple, y'all. It's because diversity in that space, the white comic media space that is, like many others, is a trick bag for blacks. We think if white media recognizes and portrays different black folks who are part of this so-called monolith, that this is something that's significant and helpful. But what it really is is a ploy, a farce, and as I said before, a trick bag. First off, white comic media puts black characters in stories for their own gain. Notice they always put black characters in their stories, but they create them in a way they want to create them, I guess. They also are particular about the way they are portrayed. So, for example, oftentimes they have a black character, but they aren't portrayed like they grew up in a stereotypically black neighborhood. They make them a nerd or they put them in an interracial relationship, especially with other white characters. And they are made the face of LGBTism. And they, for some reason, are never put in a relationship with someone else that looks like them. And this is especially true for black male characters. Also, white comic media creators know that if they toss some black characters into their stories, then that would be a draw for them. Our people will be sitting here thinking they are progressive, quote unquote, because they threw a black person in the show. And then we'll get all the way behind it because we saw somebody was black. So now here we are supporting their product because they decided to just show a black face because they knew that it would draw our attention. My second issue is diversity is a way to establish the people of color coalition further. You hear diversity and you would think it means portraying different types of black folks like Africans, black Americans, Caribbeans, etc. But really what it is is 
throwing in one black character along with an Asian character, a white Hispanic character, an Arabic character, and then having 10 white characters after you had just a few quote unquote people of color. This is not a win for black folks family. And no, this is also not progress either. Black folks have had things taken from them, even in the comic scene. Think about it. They took African gods, repackaged them as gentrified white superheroes and fed them back to us in the form of DC, Marvel, and other comic series that we know about. And they failed to allow us to tell our own stories without their agenda being put in it. And they failed to give us sustainable black shows. And it's like, you mean to tell me that black people should be grateful to even be included in a white show? Is that the vibe? Is that, is that the, the deal there? Portraying us properly is overdue. That's the bottom line. And diversity is not a solution that black people should be happy about when it comes to us being portrayed properly. It's really a slap in the face. Hell, we just got to the point where video game characters, when they're making their creative avatar or player modes in their games, offer black skin and hair options both. Before, they only had like hair options that kind of looked like stray hair or whatever and they had so-called black characters looking like some damn indians so like you had like real dark skin but then the hair still looked like white people's hair so you was out here looking like an indian the point i'm trying to make is diversity is not good for blacks because it doesn't allow for black authenticity it allows you to see the way white folks view blacks inclusion in a system of integration Anyone who knows me knows that I always advocate for black people to stop worrying about diversity, quote unquote, because diversity is just another word for the portrayal of purposeful false progressiveness and in integrating black faces into white society for the optics. I have said time and time again that if you go into white comic media creators arenas, then you should be prepared to see our people treated any old kind of way. When you look at diversity, it's simply a hope and a prayer to grasp for scraps when you're only looking from the scope of white media. I have always said black folks who are on code should be the ones telling our own stories and properly portraying them in a culturally accurate manner. One of the reasons why I want my own comic brand is so that I can accomplish this. In the back of my head, although I know I'd be an excellent comic writer, I know that the minute I'll make a character black, if I pitch it to a big company like Marvel or DC, they just turn him or her into a gay character or something that would muddy the waters up. This is why we need to have a conversation on what I talked about in previous podcasts, which is benign neglect. Benign neglect relates to everything that I'm saying right now. For those of you all who don't know where it started and what it's about, I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Because I keep saying benign neglect over and over again, but I don't think I really told you about the origins. Benign Neglect was coined by a man named Daniel Patrick Moynihan. And he was an advisor to President Richard Nixon, who had a lot of anti-black views, by the way. And this was done as a response to dealing with racial tensions and uprisings from pro-black groups, such as Black Panthers, that were created as an aftermath to blatant anti-black racism in America. What it means is it's an attitude and policy that implements the practice of ignoring a delicate issue or responsibility one is responsible for as an effective solution than actually dealing with the problem. In a way, it's all about transcending a problem by ignoring it and mentally pretending it's not taking place. It kind of reminds me of that, that meme with the dog where he's at his crib and the shit is all burnt up and shit or is burning up and he has a cup of coffee and then he sits down and then he says, this is fine. You got this big issue around you and you tell yourself everything is cool, although shit is going to hell around you. Only thing that would, in my opinion, make this even more accurate as it would be depicted 
by white supremacy and this relationship to this mean is them going and burning up a bunch of black folks and then a fire starts around them and then they sit down and say this is fine and don't ex extinguish the niggas that they just burnt to a crisp that's like the only thing that would be different between that meme and white supremacy and how it works and this is done in a lot of more ways in my opinion many of you gullible stuck on what's popular ass negroes feed into one big way that a lot of this stuff is done by benign neglect is through the civil rights movement, unfortunately. When you think about it, it was initially established for the benefit of black Americans. Then what happened is folks of other cultures began to immigrate here, such as Asians, Arabs, Hispanics, and many others that were not originally here when the issue between blacks and whites was taking place in America. This was done to cause confusion and again, to muddy the waters. And over time, things were done to make those waters even more muddy. So, for example, if you throw invisible ink in a pool and add some benign neglect in the mix, it all equals out to it being done at the expense and dismay to black Americans. So, what happened is white supremacists got smart. They started disenfranchising their own people to cause confusion. And then others who are considered non-white can say, it looks like everyone is being oppressed by rich white folks. So now to the world, the problems of black folks don't look that special. So what we as black folks did is we said to ourselves, let's get us some allies who could help us fight against the big bad white people. So we tried this quote unquote allyship thing. And by the way, I don't believe in the concept of group allyship, like white allyship and the so-called brown allies. But anyway, what happened is the so-called allies turned on us and that's even present today. Immigrants will come here and say some shit like, I came here with $4 and a dream and worked my ass off, then tell black folks they need to stop bitching, pull themselves up by their bootstraps and do the same thing. Meanwhile, they're getting tangibles as immigrants from white folks who are playing on this. So now they really have allegiance to white supremacist culture under the guise of being a common ground victim black, like black folks that just happen to overcome the economic strife whites have put us through. Some of them will even compare their traumas and what's happened to them in their homeland and then come over here and eat off the land black people built. Like, think about the white Jews. The Holocaust did not last nearly as long as black slavery and here the white Jews are coming around with anti-black views and reparations that Germany gave to them and then telling niggas to pull themselves up by their bootstraps when they have so much wealth over here you know at some point black folks back in the day fought for other brothers and sisters in the diaspora to come over to America collectively and maybe they could help them fight against white supremacy so that was initially the idea except now that's been used and weaponized against black folks because there are people from the diaspora walking around who look just like us with many anti-black views actually appropriating the culture and also assisting with white supremacists by being mouthpieces and spokespeople for our community by talking against us you know actually getting tangibles and also like allowing benign neglect to go on and i want to make something clear here while i would never advocate for mistreatment abuse maiming killing or anything else heinous to anyone unwarrantedly i must say that a disservice with a tub of benign neglect has been done to our people in the civil rights movement because now the focus has been taken off blacks and what they are owed and now it's being put on anyone who is considered marginalized so now it 
even takes race or culture out of the mix at this point. So now we throw in the LGBT community and their struggles. We now throw in people with disabilities. We now throw in women and all the struggles of these groups that get equated to the plight of blacks and all this other stuff. Wait, actually, you know what? I'm sorry. Let me correct that. It's not that the struggle of blacks is equated to anyone marginalized, but really what it is is that they are of greater importance. Now, we got to the point where black people are being called some damn people of color and Negroes are just buying right into the shit. And if I'm keeping it a buck, the real reason why is because our people are too damn afraid to just say black. We think if we include groups that don't give a damn about us into the mix, then white people will hear our voices and it will pump the brakes on the backlash that you all will receive. But I want to make something very clear. And I want to make this clear to anyone who is listening to this podcast episode, anybody who listens to any podcast episode I make in the future, and anybody who has listened to any podcast episode that I've made in the past. And hear me very, very clearly. I am not no damn person of color. I do not ascribe to being called a person of color. And if you are using that term right now in 2022, you need to foot up your ass. I'm just being honest. But in conclusion, all my talking points I have made here, the final point I want to make is I have no issues with diversity and I do embrace the greatness that is the different variations of blackness all over the diaspora. But what I don't support is diversity being used as a tool for selfish gain. When I look at white comic media, it's obvious the idea of diversity is being used to meet a demand for an audience and not for the benefit of our people. This actually is related to one of my issues with critical race theory. Critical race theory reminds me so much of people of color in its usage. I don't rock with that terminology for multiple reasons. For one, the idea of racism created by white supremacy is not a theory, it's an intangible reality. Number two, critical race theory is a safe word, much like people of color, that's used in place and in fear of simply saying white supremacy and calling it out. So in other words, look at people of color. People say people of color in order to avoid saying black. People use critical race theory to avoid saying white supremacy. And lastly, because I'm always afraid of who is controlling it, I'm afraid of who is controlling the narrative when it comes to critical race theory and who's teaching that narrative to others. Terms like this can easily be swayed and changed in definition, and it seems like that's what people just tend to do. That's why one of the things black folks have got to be careful about is going around and saying shit like, it doesn't matter who the messenger is, but more so that the message is true. I must have heard that shit like a thousand times on social media with a bunch of people who are trying to be like fake deep. But anyway, I disagree with that because depending on who the messenger is, you got to look at how much credibility and weight the message holds. If it's not something that's done in personal practice. You also have to look at the motive of the individual. White supremacists could have a message such as when they say they want to put LGBT characters in every black show. To a black person who is in the LGBT community, it may appear that there is nothing wrong with that because what they're doing is representing black LGBT people. When in actuality, white supremacists are doing this to cause division in the black community because they see that there's straight black people who have a problem with the overrepresentation of black people in the LGBT community. They speak on it, and now the people in the LGBT community can come back and say, oh, look at them, they're homophobic, yeah, blah, 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 blah. So now that causes that strife and that issue where the, where like these groups are clashing. And they also do it to control our children and to have them basically be 
embossed and learning lessons about sexuality, like specifically homosexuality. So I think that a lot of times, like people just see what's on the surface and are not looking at the deeper message. And that's what happens when you look at the facts and you look at just the truth. No, you got to look at the intent and who the messenger is and what the purpose and the point that they're trying to get across is. That's why you just don't big up people for just, you know, saying anything, even if the thing that you, that they said was true. You, you got to be careful about who you big up in that regard. But I just want to let y'all know diversity works in the same way. Diversity works in the exact same way because depending on who it is who's pushing the message about how important it is to champion diversity or to have diversity in comics or that type of thing, then the message itself could be done with the intent of serving whoever's intent it was that had that message. So in the case of somebody who is in white comic media, the idea there could be that I say diversity, but what I really mean is one black character, maybe an Asian character, and then maybe a character who is Hispanic and every other character is white. And mind you, those those characters that I just talked about, the black character is going to be the most minor out of everybody who I just even stated. So that's their form of diversity. It's like, look, we got we got black characters in our shows. Think about it. Think about it. If you look at like all these like TV shows that are out, you know, if we really want to talk about diversity, let's talk about the 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 strangeness that's around the fact that out of all the like black comic shows that we had, none of them are around. Like literally every single black comic show that we've ever had is canceled. And you can't say like, oh, well, I mean, it, it happened a long time ago. Like, you know, this, this show was out in 2016. It was out in 2015. You can't really make that excuse because a lot of these shows didn't last more than four seasons. Like, and with Black Lightning probably being like the, in my opinion, the peak of the black comic shows that lasted for a long time. Because think about it. Runaways, which I don't even, I wouldn't know. I don't even know if that's really considered a black show, but they, you know, they had Alex Wilder on it. If you can, if you count Runaways, that lasted like three seasons. If you look at Cloak and Dagger, that lasted two seasons, and that was a shame. If you look at Luke Cage, that lasted two seasons. You look at Black Lightning, that was four. Again, the peak. Batwoman, if you consider that black, that was three seasons. Brazen Dion, that was two seasons. You see what I'm saying? The bottom line, y'all, is that diversity itself is not a good thing at this moment because we can't even have the normalization of seeing healthy heterosexual black couples regularly on TV for us to even talk about being quote unquote diverse. That's why it's a trick bag because what ends up happening is you think that somebody is trying to champion your people, but really what they're trying to do is spread an agenda for their own personal gain. Anyway, uh, that was the episode for today. That's all I got for you. It was a little short. I just wanted to make sure I had this message for y'all today. And, you know, you were able to hear it. And, you know, I got it out and kind of led with some examples. But I'm definitely going to be having a lot more content to come pretty soon. So I hope you continue to tune into everything that I got to tell you and some of my other topics that I have in the upcoming future. Anyway, I hope y'all have a good rest of y'all's day, and I will be talking to y'all soon. Peace.